Welcome back, friends. As you can see today, we're looking at Navigator's core value number four, the leading and empowering of the Holy Spirit. The Bible is full of stories uh, of God's Spirit at work, beginning in the first chapter of Genesis and carrying all the way through to Revelation chapter 22, the very last chapter in the Bible. But it's quite easy to gloss over his crucial presence and role. Most of us have a favorite verse related to Jesus, but I wonder how many of us have a favorite verse chosen for the Holy Spirit? Who is the very one who is carrying on Jesus' ministry to the ends of the earth and to the ends of time? Listen for a moment to what Jesus said about the Spirit of God. Quote, the Father will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever the spirit of truth. He will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. He will testify about me. He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. It is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Now, we notice that term advocate is used for the Holy Spirit. Advocate translated from the Greek parakleti means a helper. So we want to ask, how is the Holy Spirit a helper? I'd like to take a few minutes just to identify a few ways in which he is a helper. Firstly, he helps to guide and lead us. He does this in a number of ways. He enables us to understand truth, and especially the truths contained in the scriptures, spiritual truths. The Holy Spirit makes God's word, God's word come alive to us in a way that he can speak to us through it, both to our minds and to our hearts. But that's not all. The Holy Spirit also works through our consciences, heightening them, making them alive convicting us when we need to be aware of a need for a change, perhaps through repentance or correction of something in our lives. At times, he helps us by revealing the true motives of our hearts, which the Bible tells us are naturally deceitful. Our enemy, Satan, is also a deceiver. So the Spirit's role here is important, keeping us from being misled both from within, but also from without. And finally, at certain times, the Spirit of God can put a fresh idea into our minds. Just maybe a thought leading us towards a path confirming one we are already on, or maybe a new path that God has for us. So very important, he helps to guide and lead us. Secondly, he works, he helps to bring transformation in our lives. God's desire for us as followers of Jesus, is to be conformed to the image of Christ. A key part of Christian growth is for the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to grow Christ's nature within us. As Christ is formed in us, this is a part of us becoming mature. Paul, in his letter to the believers in Thessalonica, stated this well as he thanked God for the sanctifying work of the Spirit and their belief in the truth. What is sanctify? Well, to sanctify simply is to be made holy or to be made like Christ. God works this miracle in us from the inside out so that our changing outward behavior is empowered by inner renewal. It's a natural response to what is going on inside of our lives. Jesus says this very succinctly in another passage. He says, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit to transform our sinful hearts. We can't do this on our own. Why? So that our lives may reflect the fruit of the Spirit of God. And we know what those fruits are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God also, the third point, he helps to equip us for service. 
The gifts of the Spirit enable us to make eternal impacts upon other lives. God distributes these gifts as he chooses, but he has several purposes in mind which we can take note of. A, no one receives all of these gifts as God wants us to be interdependent with other believers in life and ministry. No one is omnicompetent. We all have some gaps which remind us of our need for one another in the body of Christ. Nobody can just operate without others. God wants us to be living in community. B, God gives us these spiritual gifts for the common good, or in other words, to help reach the lost and build up people toward maturity. Gifts such as wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, discernment, and tongues are all meant to be used as an expression of love to help others to grow, again, to grow toward maturity in Christ. In the words of Peter, each of us should use each of these gifts we've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. The fourth way that the Holy Spirit helps us is to know important things. Firstly, he is the spirit of wisdom and revelation that helps us to know God better. We want to be known by God, we want to know God, and that's God's desire for us, to have that relationship at the center of our being. The Spirit helps us with that, but he also enables us to know the hope we have as co-heirs with Christ, as God's adopted children. In fact, the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirits that we would know that we are God's children. We have an inner confirmation that the Spirit is working connecting with our spirit. These great assurances allow us to rest securely in Christ no matter what life may throw our way. In summary then, without the leading and empowering of the Holy Spirit, we cannot truly know God, let alone engage the mission he has called us to participate in. As disciples of Jesus, what a privilege we have that God comes to live within us through the person of the Holy Spirit. May we all grow in being filled and led by him as his power works both in and through us to impact our world.